Welcome to the second part of the trip. A quick story here. The entire reason why Bonnie and I actually went on this trip was because of this part, the second part, Burgundy, France. I was driving to work a year prior and I had received a text message from Kristen and Max asking if we wanted to go on this amazing f uh, food and wine pair tour through Burgundy, France, through central France. And uh, I immediately responded, literally within 10 seconds, I was at a red light, I responded, we're all in, 100%, yes. And here we are. So we actually went, Bonnie and I went a week earlier to go to Normandy, and then we met up with the rest of the group in Paris. And now what you're seeing here is some footage that I took. Once we had left Paris, we actually uh, met with Steve uh, Pignagnolo, if I'm saying his name right at a uh, at, at the hotel and we loaded into a van and from here on out we weren't driving anymore it was completely catered to us he was driving us around and he was taking care of us bringing us to amazing chateaus wineries tasting beautiful wine this footage is all taken flying over right here you can see the vineyards of chablis this is all white wine here chablis is known for white wine chablis is a chardonnay 100 percent chardonnay and in this part of the trip, we're basically drinking wine and eating amazing food at amazing restaurants or catered by the, the actual winemakers who are making food and wine for us um, and letting us taste their wine, that is. Uh, this here is all Chablis, it's all uh, Chardonnay, and then the rest of it, you're going to see a lot of Pinot Noir. Okay. When they're really young, it's hard to tell the difference. Look at that barrel's empty. That's raining. That barrel's empty. That's cool. Yeah. I like the place that. Abbey de la Pierre qui vire, Roquefort, non, Roquefort, non. Tom de la Pierre qui vire, excusez-moi. Après en chèvre de la région, Crotin de Chavignol, Plaque Bitouffe, Cône du Morvan et du Vézelay. Those are all the real no, ones from this region. Yeah, the more regional ones. I brought a big camembert, du comté, a couple of classics. François, <laughs> <laughs> Tom de Brebis, des Pyrénées. That's a sheep cheese. Cantal. Cantal. Ça c'est Brebis aussi, n'est-ce pas? Euh, vache. Vache. Okay. Après on a. Non, pas ici. On a Tom de de Corse, de Corse Est-ce que est-ce que tous les tomes sont de Brebis? Ou est-ce qu'il y a des termes de marche Non, je pense que c'est vache aussi. Oui. Ouais. Valencé, on a. Et puis... Ah, bon. On va par... Euh, Madame Non, ça le met. C'est raison. So... Um, you cannot... But I think... It will be good after... After a good aging. Mm -hmm. See, as it ages, the, the city is pretty... pretty she said it's not a lot of acidity, but it's pretty noticeable now. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And if that's off-putting to somebody, you know, okay. But what happens is as this develops, as it ages, so I only taste for components now, that acidity will soften. I'm astounded to read on the like first couple of pages that Burgundy previously constituted 0.3% of the world's total wine production. It now represents 0 0.5, and I think that's be that's before they take into consideration. Oh, no. so okay. The first one with it's the truth. Yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh. No, no, no. no. Yes. Ah. Okay. After you have Morbier. 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 Saint Marcelin. Saint Marcelin. Chef. 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 Et Saint Félicien. Saint Félicien. Mm. I'm just going to vacuum clean up whatever. I eat. I eat. Pass it along. Just take less. I think I got too much for you. Pass it along. I have learned. Marco, play change. Myself. Very well. Mm -hmm. yes. On the next part of our trip, we went to the estate of Francois Lorec. You can see him here in the center. Um, this is his estate. Beautiful, beautiful house there with uh, the vineyards in the background. 
Um, basically, this entire trip, we, ba- we, we got up in the morning, went to an amazing place to try wine, have lunch, came home, took a nap, rested, and then went out again. And this was the first full day. So this was Monday, May 29th, first full day in, uh, in Burgundy. And this is the second wine tasting of that day in Francois's, uh, Fr- uh, Fr- Francois's estate. This was really funny, actually, when we got to his house, we went inside. This guy was a kind of quirky, really funny kind of guy, a younger guy. Um, He had a Mavic Pro, just like I'm flying here, right on his counter when we went inside. And I I told him, hey, I have one of those. So we immediately paused the the start of dinner, went outside, and we flew together. And right now, we're actually flying both of our drones at the same time. He, He had just received his, so he wasn't sure exactly how to fly it as well, but he was doing quite a good job. And right here I'm flying over his vineyard, the, the Lorec estate, and Francois, the owner of the estate, he's flying around near me too. We decided to both fly over to the cemetery right here. And as I got closer to the cemetery, we were trying to figure out where we were. Now, mind you, I'm looking what's happening on a small screen on my phone. I, I could see this live, but it's sometimes hard to pick out small little things flying against the horizon. But when I looked back at the video, I was able to clearly see his Mavic Pro right in front of me. And you can actually see it right here. It's about to enter the screen from left to right, flying somewhat downward. And it's right about there, little dot in the center of the screen. And then it gets really close, and I'm surprised I missed it. I probably was looking up at him. But the Mavic Pro is actually, the, the, his Mavic Pro is flying right in front of me. And he stops right there, turns, and then scoots away. Ooh, nice and cool. That's why you got to make wine, bro. <laughs> and usually these cellars, we have two wood cellars. This one can contain 350 barrels when it's full. And it's mostly of the time it's on two different levels or sometimes three. Uh, now it's just one, and uh, we have another cellar. Uh, we can we can have uh, 100 barrels. Right now we have 12. Uh, and uh, we have right now less less than one normal year of sales in stock. Mm. Uh, that's very frustrating for the winemaker that I am. Yeah. It's very frustrating because uh, this last uh, five, six years, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, um, a bigger demand on Burgundy wines, and people now are really interested to, to, to have more Burgundies and to understand more about Burgundy, etc. So the demand is increasing, and in the same time, the production is decreasing. Yeah. So there's something wrong. And, um, and that's really bad for us because, uh, you know, of course I am a winemaker, but what I love is to sell my wines all over the world. I'm in Bone. It is halfway through our wine tasting trip, Tuesday night. And we just had, we just had dinner at Cocotte's in Bone, recommended by Anne. Uh, quite a nice dinner, I do say. Uh, we weren't very hungry as you can imagine, after all the eating I'm doing here, but uh, in any case, I am going to try some Chardonnays, and I'm at Le Corno, this place here, Le Corno, and I got some Chardonnays lined up for me right here, because why not?
Stockpiles are low. Yeah. 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 We have to spend four years in a row almost now with uh, problems. Next, next, and uh, last year we was froze and, and uh, maybe four years yeah. before it was yeah. very good. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, modern mm -hmm. uh, you will have a tasting after in the old one, which was my grandfather winery, but it was not uh, very useful with all the new technology and machines, so they beat Another one in 1888. 1888. Yeah. So uh, every grapes are uncutted. They arrive over here. Uh, it's all unsorted. One time. Um, uh, we are not very uh, on to do a lot of things of the wine. Uh, we don't interact a lot, we just make little bit and we adapt uh, our work with the, yeah, with the little image and so, so it's not really easy. This is the area of red wines, the most famous red wines, some of the most famous red wines in the world. And, um, but Christian is privileged to have one white wine from Moray Saint Denis, okay? Very rare, there's only like three or four winemakers that have um, a white wine from Moray Saint Denis. And so this is something that many people in the wine industry have never had, a white wine from the next town up, or two towns up actually, um, that we'll go buy later on that you, were, you went by before. Anyway, so um, we're gonna taste this, this is, and we're gonna taste some 2015s, um, because that's the, you know, the, the recent image, and then we're gonna, <laughs> and uh, and I'm gonna sit down and for the aperitif we'll have an older vintage of this 2011 and then reds and, and older vintages. So, I mean, like a villa like the town. Like, which yes. one's Poma? Like this one. Poma. So it's quite P fresh. Okay. Okay. And it's with uh, mustard. The grain de moutarde. The, the grain of okay. mustard. The grain yes. Okay. Of mustard. Okay. Yeah. Nice. This crystals. one is uh, chèvre. Chèvre. Chèvre is the opposite of a small animal. How do you say chèvre? Oh. Oh. Yes. A goat. Goat. Yes. With yeah. But it's, it's come from the south for France. Justine came with cheese and the bread and the for you. Oh. It's very special. So take a small piece because it's quite strong. Okay. Very okay. special. Like you know that. it's artisanal. She, she came, um, she went in a very small exploitation for two lives. So oh, yeah. it's very special, okay? Oh, wow. This one we call Emboise. Emboise. It's come from Emboise. this area. And is, um, we have a fromagerie, the next of the domain. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, yeah. it come from. And this one is a Comté. Oh, okay. Comté. Jura. Comté. Comté is very easy yeah. with a uh, wine. Giant wine press. Another one over there. Twelve hundred and fourteen hundreds. They were collecting wine in there. Nice that we did. Yeah. Yeah with our good friend down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the same wine, but from Chantel now. Mm -hmm. Merci. Yeah. Okay, new, it's a new experience for you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's one specific cheese I want for the picnic. Picnic for tomorrow. Yeah. What if you're yes. picnic for tomorrow? Yes. 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 Your ecstasy. Wouldn't you want everyone to see that? that? Or do you not? Okay, you ready? Can you not feel perfect? I think we're ready. It can always be better. Okay. Hold on. Almost ready. Here are the cheeses. Dimi. You've got it with the mustard seeds. Uh, this is delice de pomal. It, it's like a brie au sevrin with your know, cream cheese. I mean, creamy cheese. Not cream cheese, but creamy cheese with the, the, the mustard seeds. This is Brie au Savarin by itself, okay? The, the creamy mm. cheese. Okay. All right. This here is a plus, which you've had before. This here is an easy um, uh, cendre. It's ashes around a fairly strong cheese. These two are the two strongest, as she says, in your nose. But, uh, no, I, lo I love that I love smell. The stink. the stink of the, you know. The this will be the creamiest. Uh, and now this one here, I don't know this one. She said it's called vigno vigneron, vigneron, which means winemaker, but it's, I don't know, it's, a, it's, it's vache. It's cow. And it's a fresh, a fresh cheese. Okay. So it's... It's diamond personnel. Seven, Charles Chambertin. 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 Seven, Charles Chambertin.
reflections fade But in some ways they remain the same And as my mind begins to spread its wings There's no stopping curiosity I wanna turn the whole thing upside down I'll find the things they say just can't be found I'll share this love I find with everyone We'll sing and dance to Mother Nature's songs I don't want this feeling to go away beautiful 50cc scootering. I kind of want to explain exactly what happened and why we ended up here. So the previous day we were out at a lunch with Anne. Anne was one of the winemakers and she had mentioned that there was a place in San Roman, which is where we are right now. This is where this video is being, is being uh, filmed. Uh, there was a place in San Roman that had a beautiful restaurant. It was a Michelin star rated place. So I knew that I wanted to rent a scooter. I knew that renting scooters is super fun and awesome. So I told the guys, hey, I'm renting a scooter. Do you want to come with me? They all were hands down. Yes. You saw all the video footage. It didn't start out like that, by the way. At first we were on some freeways. We thought we were going to die by some semis, but eventually we got off the main roads and we found these side roads. And eventually we found our way to San Roman. And here we are. We sat down at this restaurant. You're about to see some uh, pictures from the restaurant. It was, we were the first table there. It was gorgeous. The wine was good and the food was amazing. Uh, the, the, uh, the owner whose name I believe was also An, she was awesome. And uh, she was also our waitress. And we had a great time. These guys in the back behind us are Italian guys that were helping us to translate. What an experience, I must say. So we just arrived in St. Romain. Oh, these guys think it's a John 17 Michelin. Yeah, there you go. We were at a Michelin rated place. So it looks like <laughs> Anne was right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We are. We're at a Michelin star rated place. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Crispy, it's um, the fat. Yeah. Clafouti. Uh, Clafouti and gâteau. Mm -hmm. And abricot. Uh, Apricot, I got. Gâteau, I don't yeah. get. <laughs> okay. Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> so I have no idea what clafouti is. So I don't know either. Maybe that's the one. <laughs> so we should all get out of something different. That's lamb. Oui. And then... And then you pick. You pick. Oh, ma. Je sais pas. La pluma de cochon. Pluma de cochon. Aye. Et bon, super. <laughs> um, and <laughs> and uh, van. Van bottle. Oui. Est-ce que vous voulez de l'eau, une water, sparkly, uh, mineral? Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. And uh, one bottle. You pick. Uh, we don't know. 
One bottle. Uh, rouge or blanc? Do you want blanc? It's, it's uh, a rouge or blanc? Look at how the look at that boiling snails. Look at how the fat has already congealed on the surface. Oh, is that fagua? Yeah, I didn't realize. It's like a combination. How awesome is my hair, by the way? It's cool. <laughs> Merci. Voila. Super. Uh, voila. <laughs> voila. So we're in Saint Romain, uh, in Anne. Saint Romain. And Anne, one of the winemakers, she recommended coming to this place, said it was a Michelin star rated place. We tried to make reservations, and Didn't Hotel de Sip uh, said, doesn't, doesn't exist. Don't even bother. Doesn't exist. Look. But don't bother. It doesn't bother. <laughs> God. This was the salmon, pretty obvious. Next was the escargot, boiling, bubbly awesomeness. After that, we had the foie gras. It was one of the best I've had in all of France. Then this was lamb wrapped in some type of pastry shell. The, this was our least favorite, but quite good. It was beef. And this was the pig's ear and snout. Cartilage awesomeness. This is one of my favorite videos of the bunch. You're looking at La Rochefort, which is a beautiful chateau that we basically stumbled upon. I did read about this in a guidebook, Rick Steves, and I knew that we should go there after our beautiful meal in San Roman. We drove our scooters there. It wasn't a very long drive, maybe 20, 30 minutes, and we were not unimpressed. It was it's just a beautiful place. So this place was originally, it was originally constructed in 1180, um, and after 1180, it had changed hands many times. It passed from one owner to another until the castle was renamed Chateau de Rochefidel, which was Castle of the Faithful Mountain, and that was during the French Revolution and it was declared a national property. It was at that time purchased by a contractor who, and it was in shambles at the time, and it would have been demolished, except that the, the king's wife at the time, Madame Carnot, the wife of Sadi Carnot. Sadi Carnot was the president of France from 1887 to 1894. She had purchased the ruins of Chateau de Rochefort, which you're looking at right now, which did not look like it does now. Um, and she had gifted it to her older son, who was Colonel Sadi Carnot. And he decided to give it a second life. He saw the vision, he used the archives, historical texts, and he restored the, the chateau, the castle, the fortress, to what it is now. At the time, they had actually employed many of the laborers in the region who were basically looking for work because there was a plague at the time that afflicted all of the vineyards. There was a parasite and uh, gave, them, gave them work. Now, when I had videoed this, I had asked, uh, we, we actually did the tour first, which you're about to see, and I had asked one of the, uh, one of the guys who was working there if I can take my drone up in video and he said yes number one you can't record any human faces and number two you must send me a link and I have held up on both ends of that agreement so here it is Chateau de la Rochepot and we're gonna about to go inside Hallelujah. 
pactum adorremus. In novo cantico. Chateau de Rochepot. This is a greeting room. Entering here the kitchen. We, uh, by the way, drove here on our little scooters. 50 cc's. Awesome. So this is a reverse what? A reverse... Reverse circulation. So instead of circulation, you're coming to it. It's pushing air towards the fireplace. Is that what it's yeah, weird. I don't get it. Yeah. It does not uh, comprehend. No comprehend. Same. Does not compute. Well, I imagine you have to be running a fire in the fireplace. We've seen these before in the hospice. The dragon heads that are. Look at those billows. Eating the cross beams. Did it say um, it was privately owned for a period of time? Did it say when? Mm. The dual fireplace? Those are wood boobs. Nice. This room, after the kitchen, is the state room, known as the Great Hall. Look at these Some bleeding hall windows. Some places was the largest room in the castle, about 100 square meters. Admire the beautiful French ceiling. It really is beautiful. That wood ceiling is a bit worse. I can't believe the people walk around here. I know. It's too pretty. On the main beams of which exotic animals were carved, the dragon heads, performing a decorative function, but also being the objects of superstition, these dragons and other... So while I was outside, I heard someone singing Amazing Grace in the chapel where I just was singing, and I darted across, and she had just finished, and I said, hey, sing it again. And she goes, really? And I'm like, yes, really. And she sang it again. I didn't catch the whole thing, but I sang with her two-part harmony. Here it is, me and her, at the closing moments. Thank you. <laughs>
that I took of of John Luke's old vehicle. You could see our tour vehicle in the back there. That's the the van that we used for the entire trip. We initially had met at John Luke's uh, house and winery right downtown. That was the initial footage that you saw. Once we got to his vineyards, I I let the drone up and recorded this beautiful scene with the nice quaint roads, the beautiful modified old historic truck uh, that actually he eventually let me ride. You'll see a quick video of that. And I just followed us along these beautiful roads. And, and it was really nice. I've actually never followed a vehicle from inside the vehicle. That's me in the back left with the pink shirt on. There's Max in there. I believe Scott is in the front seat next to John Luke. Um, a thing about this car, to drive it, uh, which I hadn't done yet, but to drive this car was like driving a tank. The there, there was obviously no power steering, and it was very difficult to steer, steer, and you had this huge wheel. I mean, the wheel was probably, you know, a good two and a half feet across, so just very difficult to steer. To steer. It was a three-speed, um, but it was a lot of fun. At one point, I actually flew the drone away from the vehicle, and I'd never done this, and I, I actually panicked for a second because... When the, the drone has a setting where it wants to, if anything goes wrong, it wants to fly back to where it took off. You can change that setting to fly back to where the remote is. But all the while, when I lost sight of the drone in a few minutes, I, it looked like it was getting further away from me when indeed it was getting closer because it was, it was establishing its home point at, from where we left. And that was a mile from where we had driven to. Uh, so figured it out and safely got the drone back. Here I just kind of diverted a little bit, went over the cute little town there, and uh, basically what we're doing here is we're driving through the vineyards, and we're stopping at different parcels, and he breaks out a bottle of wine, and he pours a glass for everybody, and and we have a tasting right there where, where basically where the wine was born. And we did this uh, a few different stops, and then we turned around, went back, and uh, that's when I drove back and we went to a nice overlooking uh, picnic area with a picnic table and we had a nice, a nice picnic with the, with the entire group until about sunset. Uh, we left right before sunset and then we actually took the scooters and raced, I believe it was this day, we raced back to this area on the scooters, all of us, to, to get a, a sunset view with the, uh, with, with the, you know, using, using our scooters, which we still had rented. Sinking like stones, all that we fall for. Homes, places we've grown, all of us are done for. Places we've grown all 
that wheel. Turn it. Turn, Turn that wheel. What's the muzzle in there? Stop. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Woo! We survived. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> A win. Yeah. <laughs> One piece. <laughs> no casualties. <laughs> it's like driving a tank, huh? Oh my god. It really is. It's quite amazing. Merci. <laughs> Little quiches. You've got pate and croute. Um, a crust around pate. You've got what they call rosette, which is a type of salami. You've got riette de pot. Riette is like shredded um, pork, you know, in in its own juices, if you will. This is um, um, uh, saucisse de mar marteau, um, which is a type of specialty sausage here. This is the jambon persier that you've had before. That's his specialty. The butcher here, his he's won gold medals for this. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. You've got bread. This this bread is for the um, cheese. We'll do the cheese afterwards. Why? Why? I can put it up now. Don't worry. One more gouda. You can break off bread how you want it. Um, we got four salads, beets, cucumbers, mushrooms, and tabbouleh. I swear I've seen stranger things, I just don't know when. <laughs> I mean, who was this guy? <laughs> I don't know, I think that's in there. Look at this.
can imagine. This is the quarters where the people who make the wine stay who help pick the grapes. Very, very cool quarters up there. We're eating downstairs. That's my 20, year. 20 bottle. That's the 20. year I was born. That's my year. I must keep uh, for, for a friend. Huh. He's born in... Uh, 79 or 75? So, 79. Nine. 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 Okay. 75? Yeah. Can I have one? One. 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 Merci beaucoup. La première. There it is. Attention. Attention. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> like this? Ah, oh, because uh, yes. Well, over here, look, 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 no. look, 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 Oh, when I the only one Oh, I'm not the only one I'm not the only one Oh, I'm not the only one Oh, I'm not the only one I just put a top on it. No, no label. No label. Le tue labbra son più morbide dei fiori. Tu dei grappoli maturi sotto il sole. I tuoi baci come il vino fanno tira il mio cuore. Quando soli ce ne andiamo a passeggiare, dopo un albero restiamo un po' a sognare, i tuoi baci così dolci fanno cantare al mio cuore. Vino, 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 vino e baci ancora. Bella, bella, 
bella, bella, bella, al mondo nessuna c'è Trova. Bella, 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 dolcissima come te Le tue labbra sono più morbide che io Dei grappoli maturi sotto il sole c'est là, beaucoup plus sale, beaucoup plus sale. Voilà, vous savez, les sons sont en vie, en vie, en vie, en Vino, 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 vino e pace ancora.